Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Enterprise Architect Modeling Series. Uh, I'm joined again with uh, Stephen McGuire. How are you? Good, Tom. Very well. And yourself? Yeah, very well. Thanks, mate. Very well. Thanks. So we've just come to the end of the 14 UML diagrams, if you've seen our previous videos. And today we're going to start diving uh, more, more deeper into the, 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 the functionality of Enterprise Architect, I believe. So today we are looking at an introduction to traceability with Enterprise Architect, aren't we, Stephen? Yes, that's right, Tom. This is sort of starting to uh, where the rubber hits the road. We're, we're going to connect uh, various models that we've already done and, and connect them up. So we've done them, we've, we've reused things along the way, but we haven't actually uh, created uh, relationships between the different parts uh, of, of the model. So that's something we're going to do today. And the purpose of it is so that people can see how the model uh, evolves uh, by looking at um, the traceability. So you might start a you know, a strategic level that you want to completely modernise um, this urban parking case study that we're looking at. So one might go, we want to modernise the parking metre system in, in, the, uh, in the urban environment. Um, that's a strategy. They've got business cases. Um, you know, there's requirements there as well. Use cases, component um, diagrams are explaining it, uh, deployment sequence diagrams. But what we're going to look at is, a, a, you know, a really useful connection between um, requirements and use cases, just as one example of uh, the kind of traceability that we've got. Now, as always, we're going to choose our perspective. This isn't quite as important here because we've got a, a number of different things we're doing, but let's just choose the uh, requirements perspective there. And we need to, uh, <clears throat> to place this into our model. Now, we're going to connect use cases and requirements. So we've got a, an option where we're going to put it. I'm going to put uh, this, this diagram into the requirements model. So I'm going to add a new um, diagram there. Uh, I'm going to call it, uh, choose the requirements type there, and I'm going to call it requirements times use case traceability. Now, if you added that little times there, just as a, a way to show that it's relating requirements and use cases uh, traceability. So I'll create that diagram, and we're going to reuse uh, things that we've already uh, modeled. So we're not going to be using the toolbox. So I'm going to use a convenient little uh, trick here just to uh, with this little chevron here, I can just hide the toolbox. I'm not um, going to use that just for the moment. So I'll put it away. And what I'm going to do is I'll drag on the requirements that I want, um, you know, first off. So I want a book session one. I want the display panel. Um, I want uh, the payment processing and uh, let's say the um, maintenance one, perform maintenance as well. So I'll drag those on. Um, I'll say select for all. I want them to come on as a link. So we've got a number of different options there, but we want them to come on as a link, select for all, and they are laid out like that. I can choose um, to lay these out, uh, or what I'll do is I'll just I'll just drag them down here because I'm going to add another one here, which is the uh, check remaining time one as well. So let's put that one in there, and then we'll use our layout um, features uh, to do this. I'm going to use this one as the uh, model. I'm going to make it slightly larger there, and I'm going to select them, make them all the same size with the layout uh, option there, Let's space them evenly down, left align them, uh, and we're good to, to go there. Now, um, I might want to increase the spacing a little bit, and we'll do that in uh, a bit. Let's add our use case uh, model to this. So the book session one, let's have a look at in this display panel. What use cases, and this is where you start to use your, your modeling intellect or your modeling now, and you say, well, you know, what, what use case is, is going to, uh, realize these things. So um, it is actually the book parking session use case. So we'll pop, we're going to add this uh, use case here, Tom, and, and this is where your now comes in again. The book parking session is the use case that's going to realize these things. I'm going to use the quick linker and um, connect these uh, use cases up to their requirements. I'm going to use a realization relationship saying that the use case realizes uh, the requirement. And again, uh, with this one. So, so Stephen, just uh, we've got a use case now on a requirements diagram. So Enterprise Architect can let you put different types of elements on requirement or on diagrams that aren't necessarily designed for them. Yeah, Tom, great question. Uh, yes, you can. So you can put any element that you want onto any uh, diagram. You'll notice that the toolbox uh, won't have those elements in there, but I can configure the toolbox to have both requirements and use cases in there. But in this case, we're dragging things from uh, you know, from the, uh, the existing elements. So uh, I can put anything on this diagram uh, that I like. And really, 
you know, when I do my consulting work, Tom, and I'm, I'm you know, looking at different organisations, this is really an example of model maturity. Quite often the textbooks uh, and, you know, with um, with respect to the people that write the textbooks, they don't have a lot of time to do, um, you know, consulting work or, or, or real work. So they can find themselves to, you know, to what the specification says or what the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the particular elements. So, you know, requirements on requirements diagrams, use cases on use case diagrams. But the power of the tool comes into actually relating all these elements together. That's where the real power comes from. And the real, you know, the real modeling um, expertise comes from being able to connect these elements um, together. So let's uh, let's continue on here. We're just going to drag these down and look at the um, look at these uh, these alignment indicators there. Um, very useful again there. So we'll just space those out a little bit. So check remaining time. So we've got uh, a use case there. We'll drag that one on as well and uh, put that one on again using the the alignment tools. Uh, we've got that spacing right. It's going to realize this um, check uh, time there. So we'll put that on and uh, the payment processing. We've got uh, a number of things here that we can choose from. So we've got the option of um, pay for parking. So let's put that on there and say OK to that. Um, and notice that I've done this. Um, I've actually done this before, Tom. I've linked this one up uh, already when I was doing uh, part of another model. And so what we've got there is that um, pay for parking. Now I've done, let's have a look at this um, process payment here. We'll drag that one on. And so you'll see. To, to, just just back it up there, Stephen. So you, you put that <clears throat> you put that use case on, and the relationship automatically showed up because you've done it before somewhere else in the model. Yeah, that's right, uh, Tom. You, you uh, that's that's again a, a really powerful thing. That uh, if I've done something, if I've made that connection before, then it will pop up in any uh, any new diagram, and so you can immediately see um, that connection. You don't have to. Uh, you're not guessing that that's there. So. Uh, very powerful. And I'm going to connect this one up, the process payment. So you can see here as a realization, you can see here um, that uh, we've got a use case that realizes two requirements. And then down here, we've got a requirement that's realized by two different use cases. So uh, a different thing uh, going on there. Now let's leave this um, let's leave this one here, this uh, perform maintenance. We'll put that one on and uh, we'll leave this use case on the diagram, but we won't put a connector for there at the moment. Maybe we're not sure uh, exactly what's uh, going on there. So we'll just leave that one there. Use the alignment tools again. Now the I can see these relationships between this in the diagram, but there are all sorts of other ways that I can um, look at those things as well. So I've got this relationships window here. Uh, which I can then click on an element, which becomes the context element, and you can see that it's showing me um, the relationships uh, there. So uh, that one is there. We can look at uh, this process payment here, and you can see that it's connected to the requirement, uh, and uh, it's also got uh, this connection to the um, process payment um, uh, use case. So there we have that. Now, there are a number of different ways we can look at that. Relations window is one. The traceability window is one of my favorites. I can look at an element and say, look, let's look at this, uh, this one here. And I can see that not only is it connected to these two um, requirement implements, realizes these, uh, these different requirements, but it's also connected to the motorist. And I think, oh, that's an interesting thing. So um, find in all diagrams. So I can look at that and say, look, what's that diagram? I can look in the... Um, the communication diagram, the activity diagram, the sequence diagram, and this use case parking meter system diagram. So there it is over there. So I'm kind of traversing the model, looking at uh, all sorts of different uh, places where this uh, elements have been used. So uh, that's incredibly useful. And I can, I've got all sorts of options on this traceability window as well, the kind of things that I want to display. I might not want to display all the different types of relationships. Um, so I can I can uncheck some of those and um, refine it to a smaller list. But uh, that's very useful, um, Tom. You can see um, this is um, this guy here is um, connected to the to the use case. Uh, so quite useful. And uh, this one here, uh, you can see it doesn't have any connections at all. Um, this one's connected to the maintenance staff because that's the person that's performing that use case. But what I want to show you now is. Uh, another really useful view. So 
I guess it's time to sort of start thinking about, we've got a lot of elements and connectors and things in our model, but what are the other views that people might want to see? So we looked at that relations window, we looked at the traceability, but another one of uh, my favourites is the um, the trace of the, the relationship matrix window. So what I can do is I can select this one in the requirements model in the project browser, and I'm going to go to the design ribbon now. And we have under the on the package panel, we have a number of different uh, things, but one of them we've got is the package matrix. So I can say open as source. So let's have a look what happens when I press that button. So what we've got here is um, the source, it's a requirements model. So what I need to do is choose um, the type of element there. And so I'm going to say requirement and notice that they um, pop up there straight away of all the uh, of all the requirements that I've got in that package. Now, what is it what is it connected to? What's the target that we're looking at? We want to try and find the connections between things. Let's locate this package in the browser. And it's the use case model that we want to uh, look at here. So again, it doesn't pop up until we choose uh, the use cases. So we're going to choose use case there. And now you can see that we've got uh, all of those uh, use cases there. So the link type uh, is going to be a uh, realization. So we'll choose the um, realization from uh, that one there, and there it is there in the list. And notice nothing um, pops up uh, still. And we need to look at um, this one here. We'll go to both here for the moment. And you can see that um, suddenly the little arrows represent the connections between um, the use cases and the requirements. And you can see the arrows kind of pointing. If you read it like this, the booking session use case um, it uh, it realizes the display panel, right? Now, uh, over here, we've got uh, these requirements and you can see the requirement types there. Um, the, the other thing is that I can see that not all my use cases are actually related to requirements and, and vice versa. Have I made a mistake? Is there something uh, wrong? Have I not, not completed the work? What I can do is go to the options here and make that uh, much more obvious. So. Um, the matrix options give you all sorts of things. So include source children, include uh, target children. You can leave those out if you want Want to. Sort the axes, show the package names. Uh, so I'll do that and I'll just show you that one. And that goes shows you the package names. But in our case, it's not that, uh, it's not that useful. So I'll turn that one off. And, uh, and what I'm going to do is use the bottom two ones where I can say highlight the source elements without relationships and highlight the target elements without relationships. So this is really the crux of traceability. What I'm trying to do is find gaps or find overlaps of things that have been you know, doubled up. So let's have a look what we do that. So a bit of a change, but um, how do I read this thing? What I do is I read and say, you know, these, um, these pink ones here, these guys here don't have anything. You can see they don't have any relationship to a requirement and the blue ones, are requirements that don't have any uh, use case connections. So uh, that's a very, very powerful view using those color, uh, that color display. So I guess a takeaway from that is, you know, we we have a system that you know, has a requirement to do something, but in in this case, it's identified places where we haven't defined where the fulfillment of those requirements is going to come from. So at the end of the day, we're going to have a system that's incomplete. And that's what that's what you've shown us. Yeah, that's right, Tom. And and you know, it may be that uh, it may be obviously that you're doing this thing in iterations, and so you know that might be something else that you want to uh, look at. But uh, the other thing I can do is uh, from this thing, I can you know start to kind of explore this a little bit and say, look, what's this weatherproofing thing here? I can go, you know, uh, locate and uh, set this as a context element, right? And that gives me the ability then to look at the properties, and I can go, oh, the meter must be housed in an I. P65 rated weatherproof enclosure. So I can go, well, that seems like that's quite critical. If we need to get a parking meter out on day one, we probably need to do that. Uh, but the other thing I want to show you, Tommy, is that remember we, when I went back here, I, I kind of I, I skipped over this last um, element here with the reform maintenance, and I didn't make any connection between reform maintenance use case and the perform maintenance requirement there. So uh, what I can do back here is go, oh, I can uh, look at this direction, right? And I can say, well, actually, what was the direction? It's target um, 
to source, right? So from the target um, to the source, that's where the relationship's going. Now, we can see that the um, perform maintenance uh, use case isn't connected to any requirement, and the requirement isn't connected to any use case. I can select that cell there and say, create new relationship. And it knows it's a type of realization, and so it's automatically put that uh, relationship in there. Now, I'm not just going to, you know, I've, I've looked at the thing and I've said, okay, that's what we need to do. So now if I go back to this uh, this diagram, you'll see that magically that's uh, put that uh, relationship in there. So again, the one of the take-home messages is it's a, think about it as a deep model, as a repository that's got, you know, it's like a graph that things are connected to each other. And you saw that when I, you know, dropped the pay for parking one on, that was already connected. And so you saw uh, how that how that happened. And now we did this, uh, added this relationship in a completely different visualization. And suddenly, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it magically appears uh, on this diagram. So again, take home message, lots of different uh, visualizations, but the deep model is remaining consistent. Uh, okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, this is a very um, you know a, an introduction to uh, to traceability, and we've looked at a number of different uh, views of this. We've looked at the uh, relations r relationships window. We've looked at the uh, traceability window, and we also looked at the relationship matrix. Now, Tom, that's uh, one last thing I wanted to to show you is lots of different options here, and we'll explore these in another video. But uh, you know, I can. Um, you know, save this as a uh, PNG file, as a meta file, export it to CSV, uh, do all sorts of things like that. Uh, but I can also save it as a new profile and I'm going to call it um, the um, requirements times use case. I'll leave it um, leave it as that and I'll put a prefix uh, on it. It's uh, it's the uh, parking meter system uh, requirements times use case. So I'll, I'll say OK to that. Now, if I close that that uh, relationship matrix, it's kind of gone, and I don't need to reconstruct it. Uh, if you look at the project browser here, the, the browser we've got the project panel selected, um, over here in the resources one, uh, I can look at this here, and now, notice now matrix profiles has got an entry under PMS requirements times use cases. I can bring that up uh, and the um, you know revisualize that, so anyone else that wants to to view this can um, you know can look at this, and I can adjust uh, I can adjust things here if I want to uh, make them uh, you know longer, uh, and uh, again, you know an incredibly powerful view. I can include this in documentation. I can include things in uh, in our web views as well. So uh, that's about it for the um, an introduction to uh, traceability. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for that, Stephen. That was. Uh... Very cool to start seeing this model come to life with the different tools and, and features. Uh, thanks to everyone for watching. Uh, again, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we we read and, and comment back on, on all the comments there, so really appreciate your support. And join us again next time for the next video in the series. Thanks, Stephen. My pleasure, Tom. See you next time.